Hi, it's Dan with EUjuicers.com, and I'm here with a brand new product that I've been very interested in seeing, because this product is one of those few times where I get a chance to see something that's new, not just something that's an evolutionary step, like a juicer with a wider mouth or a slightly stronger motor, but this is something with a whole new technology. If you think back with juicing, it used to be centrifugal juicers were the standard, and then uh, in the 90s, the slow juicing technology came out with horizontal juicers. That was a whole new revolutionary step. Then verticals came out, something like that. This represents something like that. This is the Vidia vacuum blender. And the difference, the big revolution that I'm saying, is that this uses vacuum technology to solve the problem of how do you get the oxidation out of your blended products. What this does, you see the design here. You see how it has these curved arch tops. This is functional actually. There's a vacuum pump inside here that will pull out the air and you'll see that in a little bit. But first, I want to show you exactly what this product looks like, what it comes with. You see it comes in a red and a silver and it comes with jars. It actually comes with this spare to go smoothie jar. The cool thing about this, this also has the vacuum attachment. So you can make a smoothie in the vacuum and then you can pour it in here put that here and it will take the air out. You can take it to work, take it to the gym, whatever, and you'll have a vacuum sealed smoothie. Also want to show you a couple of the parts here. The vacuum feature, there's a little tiny rubber like cap here and this is what keeps the air in. The pump sucks the air out around it and then when you're done you'll see me, you pull it up and the air goes, the air comes out. Let me quick show you the blades too. It pops out for easy cleaning. It's got a six sided <coughs> hex blade. A little gasket here just to keep the liquid sealed. Simple unit, easy enough to clean. I'd also like to show you that vacuum feature in action. I thought what I would do is try some marshmallows. because Marshmallows are spongy. They should react pretty well to a lack of air. So check this out. I got couple of big mush mushrooms. How about marshmallows? It's Halloween time, so you can get them right now. And watch this. I'll turn it on. There's a button here for vacuum. For a minute it looked like it was going to explode, they were expanding so much. There's also a vacuum seal up here on the top just to release the jar. And check this out. I'll let the air out. Down they go. So it's a straightforward uh, operation here. You see the controls. Just a vacuum button. There's an auto button. It just has one cycled program. You can also do fully manual. There's a pulse feature. You can press that and then an analog dial to have uh, variable speeds. Max is out at 20,000 RPM and it's um, 960 watts, which puts it between the ones at the department store. They're around 300 watts. The top, top ones like uh, Vitamix, those will top out around 1400, 1500 watts. So this product's positioned right in the middle there. And one thing I did want to say, this is really focused on people who need that oxidation function. So if you're making a lot of smoothies or if you're doing raw foods, things like that, this is great for that. I wouldn't use this personally to make things like nut butters or make flour. It's not really designed for that. I'd leave that to a Vitamix or personally a nut butter. I'd make that in a horizontal juicer. So that's a first look at it. And... I'm going to do some tests right now with some different produce. I brought a lot of things here, maybe starting with apples. So I'm going to try a little test here, actually three little tests, with apples, tomatoes, and bananas. I'm going to put one apple in each blender with some water because you need liquid to blend and try it with and without the vacuum function. 
I'll use this guy without the vacuum. And theoretically, what should happen is those fibers should expand. Should be enough. Fibers should expand during the vacuum process, which means it should make a more smooth, consistent result from the blending. In theory, anyway. So we'll see. Let's put it in action. So what I'm going to do is hit the vacuum button on this guy. Once it's done vacuuming, I'm going to pulse a couple of times, get the ingredients moved around right, and then just run them for 20, 30 seconds. You'll notice it ran a little longer than with the marshmallows because there's more air to pull out of this jar here. So a few pulses. <laughs> So first, see if I can pour it without getting it everywhere. This is the one without the vacuum. Again, it's apple and water. I've got to release the vacuum air pressure. And here's the one in the vacuum. Definitely smoother to pour. What I'm going to do now is move on to the next. Set these aside and let's watch. Let's see if these oxidize. Because typically it takes a few minutes. And at the end I'll pour them out and check out the consistency of the two. Already I can see this one here is far more liquidy, smoother. This one's separating and chunkier up at the top. I can also see the color on this is a lot brighter. <clears throat> Again, this is oxidizing, and over a few minutes, it's probably going to get a lot browner. So I'll clean up these jars. I just have to run water through them, and let's try the same thing with tomatoes. So I'm going to throw a few of these tomatoes. They're pretty big, maybe three tomatoes on each. And some water just to help it start blending. Again, this isn't a recipe. This is just a test for oxidation. Again, non-vacuum side here, vacuum side here. So here's the one that wasn't in the vacuum. I do notice a lot of air bubbles, a lot of foam there. Let's see how the one looks in the vacuum. Already I see the colors a lot more intense. Again, that's because the oxygen was pulled out. Nothing's oxidizing. Consistency too. Wow, check that out. Let me put some lids on there. 
This one on the left looks really white because there's lots of tomato particles still floating around. Like I said, the vacuum expands the fibers, so it makes it blend a lot more smoothly. Yeah, there's a huge difference on this. We'll get some detail shots so you can see that. So I'll clean these guys out. Let's do the same thing with bananas. With these, wow, check that out. It's just been a couple minutes and this guy's already turning kind of sludgy. So now the last oxidation test are bananas. I'm gonna put two bananas and some water again just for ease of blending in each one. I think two should do it. And check out, you can see the tomatoes are already separating. Like dramatically separating. While the, the vacuum blended one is just staying completely consistent. and has a really rich color. I'm not sure if I need to add water, but might as well. That might actually retard the oxidation a bit. Might be a little more dramatic without, but I just want to make sure it blends. Okay. blended real fast. Tricky part will be, can I get this here? If not, I'm going to grab a glass. Interesting. It's like liquid glue. All right, successful. How did this guy do? Theoretically, this one should be like a darker, more banana-y color. Oh yeah, this one's a lot easier to pour too, as I pour it right down the front. Notice the color and the consistency again. Again, bananas from the same bunch, same water. And you can see all the air still in here. There's a lot of bubbles. Actually, I'm leaving this open because I want to try this too. Okay. <laughs> See, when I shake it, this guy, it's not going anywhere. It's staying, it's like sealing itself in this jar. Let's see if I can get this to pour out. It's just sealed in there. Here it goes. It's like a foamy, madness. Foamy banana. Sweeter. Mm, it has that, I don't know how you say it, like a banana aftertaste, whereas this one didn't. Hard to explain without tasting it, but it tastes more like a real banana. How's that for an explanation? So finally, I'm going to try vacuum blending. I'm not going to compare, just one with a smoothie. What I'll do is just a basic smoothie recipe. I've got soy milk here, about 350 milliliters. Put in a handful of spinach. See how it does on greens. Put in a banana for some sweetness. I want to spice it up a bit with some ginger, a couple of pieces, and get a little 
fat and protein going with some sunflower seeds, also the texture. Hopefully I have enough liquid in there. If not, I can always add some more. I'm gonna do the auto function. This has an auto blend. I hit this button, it'll vacuum, then it will do three pulses, and then it will do a certain length of speed. So let's see how that goes. It's an automatic cycle, but I think it's done. <laughs> See how this looks, how foamy it is. Now, hopefully you can see this on the details, absolutely smooth, like Completely. There's no bits of spinach leaf, no chunks of ginger floating around in there. And I do want to taste it. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a good recipe. That ginger adds just enough, not too much. Yeah, that's really good. Super smooth, really sweet. And that's about it. Uh, let's take a look. Let's see how things are going here. So here's the apples. It's probably 15 minutes later since I did that. So you have your choice of green apple or brown apple sludge. There is red tomato. Look at that, fully mixed. And there's pink, white, water tomato mixture. And bananas look kind of similar. There's smooth consistency banana and there's Wow, banana paste, banana glue. So if you want to glue things together, you could use it for that. And that should wrap it up. I'm actually honestly pretty impressed with the results of the blender. If you want more information about the new video vacuum blender, come to our website. That's at www.eujuicers.com. Thanks for watching, see you next time. See in there, it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, this looks good looking in it. I don't know if you want to look in there. This one's kind of <laughs> not much going on. Banana baby food. It's like barf. Oh, it's like something that comes out of a baby. <laughs>